Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So I have here a Skoda Octavia to look at. Okay, so the customer's complaint with this is when you get in, start the engine and you move it more than a couple hundred yards, the revs creep up to about 1100 RPM and he thinks it's doing consistent regions. Uh, he's brought it to a few different places. Okay, so just having a little chat with the customer, um, just going over a few quick things with him, you know, what's happening. Well, when you move it a couple hundred yards, the revs go up. You know, and he's been told it's because of their DPF, but he's had various people out and they can't give him an answer why it's doing it. So it's had th three force regents from three different garages, from what I've been told. And it's had some various sensors, it's had the charge cooler replaced, it's had a new turbo. Uh, it's had five or six different small sensors and whatever else um, replaced. But yeah, and then he he brought it to another garage, um, and then he brought it to sorry a mobile mechanic. So it's been to three garages. Then he's had a mobile mechanic out who says he knows about DPFs. Again, he done a fourth region, uh, but apparently he knows about DPFs. So, and he said, well, he can't see anything wrong with it. That there is nothing wrong with it. So all of the answers from all of the garages have said, we'll try a fourth region, but we can't see anything wrong with it. We can't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, so basically, I'm here to see if I can find out what's wrong with it. Now there's no faults on the car apparently, there's no uh, engine lights on and but it's just consistently holding high revs and he's also been told that it was possibly the battery and he's had that changed. Now because I mentioned that to him I said well even the battery can, can cause that because if you've got a weak battery these have got a smart alternator and they will try and counteract it by holding the revs up to put some more charge into the battery. Um, and if you've got a, a weak battery, it will consistently try and do that. But obviously the battery's been replaced, so it's not that. Um, but obviously parts shouldn't be chucked on. You should try and confirm, is the battery weak? Does it need it? Is the DPF, you know... Before I even look at this car, from what I've been told, it's done 167,000 miles. The DPF's probably had its, uh, coming to its end of life. And it's just the pressure isn't coming down, even though it's it's regening. So you have your DPF pressure range sort of between here and here. And if you're sort of 50% in that or 80% in that range, the car will keep trying to do a regen to bring the pressure down, but it will come down to here when it needs to come down to here. So it will come down from here to here. So basically, you come down from 50 millibars to 40 but it needs to come down to five and it's not doing that so it will then keep trying keep repeating the process sometimes these cars after a long period they will give you like a p2002 code for that but a lot of the times they will just it depends it's all to do with the software so that's why people ask me you know you should know what's wrong with it and whatever it, it, or will will this fault give this light off every car is different it's how the software is programmed to behave so if if you get a vivaro or run off traffic that's got eight or ten millibars on, on, on well ten to twelve millibars on the pressure you will get dpf faults come up you'll get p2002 or you'll get uh, regen consistency or oil dilution faults because it's trying to regen often some cars will not give you no fault whatsoever you can consistently drive with a block dpf and it just won't give you a fault so that's where we are okay we're going to use the launch x431 euro uh, we'll hit intelligent diagnose. You don't have to do that. You can use the normal one. Just, just very used to doing that one. So let's do it. You need the internet for this intelligent one. Skoda. I'll go to diagnostic. speed scan okay we've got rain light condition and we've got turbocharger under boost well, it's just had a new turbo apparently so First of all, I'm going to, what I'm going to look at is the DPF um, information. So, if we look for the differential pressure, differential particle filter, differential pressure. So we're not looking at the recirculation pressure. 
we are looking at the particle filter itself and then we're going to look at how, how much soot is in the car measured and calculated and we'll look at some regen information if we can if it's got a hair we'll see what we have miles since the last regen that'll do All the rest of that is not really important. Well, it's regeneration status, yep. I've clicked the recirculation there, haven't I? Didn't mean to do that. Get rid of that one. Okay, we have 54 pressure. So already that's looking like a worn out DPF. We should not have 54 pressure. Should only have sort of four or five. That looks like one and a half kilometers ago since it's done a region. Yes, so that confirms that the DPF's worn out there. Because the DPF has regened such a short time ago and we still have a high pressure, this DPF is either worn out or damaged. Um, probably it could have ash buildup 14.3 grams, 24.2 grams. Alright, so the chances are that if I try and clean this DPF, it's not going to work. I, al I already know that before I start. So, a lot. Well, this is where a bit, little bit of knowledge comes in handy, whereas a lot of DPF cleaners will say, yeah, it needs a DPF clean. I know that a DPF clean is likely not going to work. Um, maybe unless I add a little bit of acid to the DPF cleaner, we could possibly burn off some of the ash, if there is any in there, but it may not be ash. It may just be a case of the DPF is worn out or damaged or melted or something like that and it, that's why we've got a consistent high pressure okay let's move it a couple hundred yards and see if the uh, revs come up a bit okay so i've moved it about 50 yards basically we're yeah we're up around a thousand rpm so now what i'm going to do is try and confirm that that is because it's regenning or is it is it because of low voltage uh Okay, so the alternator isn't charging at the minute from what I can see here. Now these have a smart alternator, so it doesn't give you 15 volts all the time. It will come on and off. That was why he was told he needs a new battery, because it was sometimes idling at 12.9 volts. But that's that would be incorrect as far as I'm concerned. Okay, yeah, so I can see there the exhaust temperature is shooting up. So it is trying to do a region. So we will probably see in a moment that this resets as well. Once that reaches 600 degrees we'll start to see this soot come down a bit but obviously this soot is not going to come down as low as it needs to be. This soot should come down to, this measured soot should come down to less than 6. But I, c I can already say that I, I'm confident that that's not going to happen. So there we are, it's at 620 degrees now. We are idling, high idling you can see there, so that does, does confirm that it is regeneration. We see now that the pressure is also increased to 126 millibars. Just change it over. You'll see there the soot grams are dropping. But they're not gonna drop enough. Well, it's actually increasing again, you see. They're trying to drop. Now calculated and measured. Calculated soot is where it thinks it should be because it's regenerating. This is how where the soot should be should be. But obviously the measured is way above that. This is what the actual grams of soot is according to the pressure. Press the grams of soot there isn't anything to measure grams of soot, there's no weight measurement in there, but it just calculates how much pressure is there and converts that to how much grams it thinks that, that is in there basically. So what I'm doing now is checking the pressure to make sure that the sensor is reading correct. 125 millibars of pressure. So you see obviously people are replacing these sensors. This one here, airflow meter has been changed, and 
this charge cooler will change a few months. Uh, well, it's been ongoing for a year, a year and a half. So about a year and a half ago, these were changed: turbo and charge cooler. Okay, so I'm going to use like a mixture of the DPF cleaning fluid with some brick acid in it, or patio cleaner. Now this is it's kind of a weak, very weak one. I would like something stronger, but that's that's all I can get hold of today. I think it's only like five percent or something. This one, but I would like something a bit stronger. Uh, we're just going to try it because obviously we know it needs a new DPF anyway, so there's no harm giving it a go. We're going to see see what happens if we try it. So we've got that hooked up into this pipe here, disconnected this sensor. Okay, now I'm just going to hold the rivs up. We get some of that cleared out. We've got a lot of smoke now coming. It's actually dying off a bit now, but yeah, we had more than that a minute ago. Okay, so now we're running another test drive after the clean has been put in. Okay, DPF pressure has come down to 42, but surprisingly, the soot, the soot mass has come down to an acceptable level. Uh, but the DPF pressure is still too high, so I mean, we're holding the revs here. I'm expecting that to you know, be increasing back up because the pressure is still high, but it's not. So according to the ECU, <laughs> this pressure is now okay because the soot grams have dropped down. Obviously, but we've got nearly 200 RPM there, 200 millibars at 2,500 RPM, 40 millibars. It's come down a bit, but not good enough. So like I expected, it's um, definitely a damaged DPF. Uh, now we've driven 4.7 kilometers and it hasn't regen yet but it was doing it every less than two kilometers it was regenerating each each regeneration was under two kilometers basically uh, we're gonna test drive it a little bit longer and see if it does another regen again okay we're gonna take it out do another couple of miles in it and see how it behaves then now before I done this clean um, every time you take the car out Within 100 yards, it would start to regenerate and the revs would stay high. That's not happened now. It's only five kilometers, but it hasn't happened. So there is an improvement, but it's not good enough. This car is gonna need a new DPF, um, but we're just gonna take it on another couple of miles and see if it does regenerate again. It's just spending another 20 minutes um, test driving and just getting, getting a feel for how the car is behaving, really. That's all I'm doing. So the main point here is I'm looking at getting these these pressures or see if these grams of soot are shooting back up, which they're not just yet. Okay, test drive done. Now this car is really, really strange and I'm gonna have a little chat about why. So you can see there the soot grams after 20 kilometers have only risen from you know, 0 0.4 grams, basically. So five, I think it was 5.4 to 5.8. So not a lot and it's not regenerating as it was before. Now this car is very strange because firstly it's come to me with a year and a half problem where it's been regenerating every sort of two kilometers and the strange thing about that is it hasn't given a fault code, no engine lights, nothing. The customer's just complaining because he knows the revs are 1100 rpm and it's using a lot of fuel. So no fault code, you'd expect it to give a fault code when it's got 127 millibars of pressure once the engine warms up. When the engine was cold, it was sort of 60, 70, but at a warm engine, it was doubling to 125 millibars. No, but no fault code for that. Now, we're still at 40 millibars of pressure after the clean, but the car is behaving absolutely perfect. The grams of soot are not rising up. It's not regenerating, um, which I'd expect with 40 millibars of pressure to still be at at least 25, 30 grams of soot. Um, but it's not so now people ask me questions like that you know how often should a car regen <coughs> what's a good soot level and what's now a good soot level is below six I'd say good pressure is around six or below but this car is very confusing because it's the information is contradicted here we've got high pressure but we've got now low soot grams after the clean so but yeah this car is gonna need a new DPF but I don't know why it's not given us any errors on the dash. He's had a year and a half, no errors on the dash. No fault codes specifically for that. The only thing I'm gonna do now is just do a smoke test to confirm if 
or if we have a boost leak or anything like that because obviously there was a fault code there for the PO299 that's not what I'm looking at we're just looking at what's the condition of the DPF here for this video but we're going to smoke test the engine and make sure that we haven't got a boost leak anyway so any car that's got a you know boost issues or anything like that or if you're doing a DPF claim most of the time I'll always do a smoke pressure test just to confirm we have no leaks anywhere so we're just doing that now let that run for a couple of minutes just to confirm that we have got no boost leaks anywhere that's going to be affecting how the car runs. Okay, so we've confirmed there's no boost leaks. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to leave it at that. But the pressure's come down a bit. The car is behaving much better. It's not regenerating often. The soot grams are staying at 5 grams, like I said, which is weird because it shouldn't. Uh, but maybe as far as the ECU con is concerned that that's that's normal pressure but it's not so to fix this car in the future it's going to need a new DPF that's to fix on it um, you can always I will always advise having the fuel injectors tested before you replace the DPF but it's never usually an issue on these it's always just it's the mileage it's 160,000 the DPF is at its end of life just needs a new a new DPF so see you on the next video